And this is why it's important to chill or cool your mixture to room temperature so that you're adding a, a cooler temperature to your whipped cream. You don't want to deflate your cream. But at the same time, you don't want this mixture too cold that the gelatin starts setting up. So you'll have them sort of like temperatures. And I find it works well to fold the two together using a whisk. And it does become quite fluid. When you're working with gelatin, this happens quite frequently, um, that when you add your cream mixture, it turns more liquidy before it starts setting up. And let me add the remaining whipped cream here. This almost reminds me as much of a cappuccino, which traditionally uses steamed milk on top, a uh, Viennese coffee, which is the shot of espresso just with whipped cream on top, and that's equally decadent. The first time I made this recipe, I actually made it for 120 people. I was doing a ladies' luncheon fashion show, and the theme of the menu was a taupe and lace. And so I thought the color of this mousse matched perfectly, and I served it in lacy brandy snap tuiles. And it really did suit the fashion show, and everyone enjoyed it. There we go. So that's folded in. And the cool cream will immediately start setting the mousse just a little bit. And then your choice of cups. You could put this in glasses, in bowls, but I do like the idea of playing with the cappuccino idea and feel these right to the top. Give it a little shake to level it and put it in the fridge. I find it takes a good two hours for it to set. I have some already set. And then just to top it off, like a cappuccino, you could use a sprinkle of cinnamon or a dusting of cocoa powder on top. A great way to enjoy your coffee. Now when I come back, I'll start on the cappuccino ice cream cake, but first, enjoy a cappuccino mousse. Dream about coming to America. For Ramsey, it's a 